generation so that the world may get off of fossil fuels in enough time to prevent greater ecosystem damage or war over the looming energy crisis which is sure to sweep the earth in the coming decade. This is a matter of the most pressing import. It has been ridiculed, yes. I know many in the media would like to talk about little green men. But in reality, the subject is laughed at because it is so serious. I have had grown man, men weep who are in the Pentagon, who are members of Congress, and who have said to me, what are we going to do? Here's what we will do. We will see that this matter is properly disclosed. And these courageous witnesses, the first 21 of over 100 that we have already interviewed on videotape, have stepped forward to speak the truth. Now, I expect people to be skeptical, but not irrationally so, because these men and women have come forward and they have their credentials, they can establish who they are, and they have been first-hand witnesses to some of the most important events in the history of the human race. As was pointed out to me by some of the men here, they were charged with handling the nuclear weapons of the United States. Their word was trusted on everything of great importance for the national security. We must trust their word now. As Monsignor Balducci said at the Vatican, in an interview I had with him recently, it is irrational not to accept the testimony of these witnesses. So please be skeptical. But that is not the same as prejudiced and closed-minded. This is a matter of great importance, and I ask the media, the scientific community, and the political community to look seriously at this matter and to do the right thing for humanity and for our children. We have available for the media and for members of Congress a nearly 500-page briefing document with transcripts from dozens of these top secret witnesses. We have a four-hour videotape summary, it's not a commercial product, I warn you, from this project of the 120 hours that we have in interviews so far. They've been boiled down to four hours and it's available for the Congress to review and for the major media to review. We can establish that this subject is real and has tremendous significance for the human future. I ask on all of you who are listening to contact the members of Congress that represent you and the leaders around the world and other countries and ask them to hold an honest inquiry into this subject to support a ban on weaponizing space since we are sharing space with other life forms and that we move quickly as a people to understanding that this is the end of the childhood of the human race. It is time for us to become mature adults in the cosmic civilizations out there. To do this, <clears throat> we must become a peaceful civilization and we must look as we go into space with an intent of cooperating with other civilizations, not weaponizing that high frontier. The men and women who will speak next will do so in order, beginning on your left. They will introduce themselves. I ask for the media to refrain from questions until each witness has spoken briefly about who they are and what they have personally been involved with or witnessed in their government, military, or government-connected careers. At the end, we will have questions. All of you may ask questions for as long as we can stay here, and we will provide you with all the information that you need. So we will begin now with the first of our witnesses, Mr. John Callahan. My name is John Callahan. I'm a retired FAA employee. I was the division manager for the Accidents Evaluation and Investigation Division in D.C. About two years before I retired, I received a call from Alaska region 
with the uh, region wanted to know what to tell the media. When I questioned, tell the media what? He says about the UFO, and it went downhill from there. What UFO? It turned out I told him what any government employee would do at that uh, time was to tell him it's uh, under investigation. And then I had him send all that data to the FAA's tech center in uh, Atlantic City. The next day, my uh, immediate boss, service director, Harvey Safir, and I went to Atlantic City. I had just purchased a, uh, a new video camera, and I videoed the, uh, the event. In Atlantic City, we had them play back on a, uh, on a scope, you would call a scope, a plan view display, PVD, exactly what the pilot uh, uh, seen or what the controller seen, and we uh, tied that in with the uh, voice uh, tape so we could hear exactly what the controller said and what he heard, and we taped it. We came back the next day, uh, briefed the administrator, Admiral Ingen, on what happened. He wanted a five-minute briefing. After we started the briefing, he wanted to know if he could see the video. We put the video on. He watched the video, the whole video. The next day, uh, he set up a, uh, a meeting for me to give a dog and pony show to President Reagan's scientific staff and whoever they brought over and to hand off all that data to them. That uh, morning in the FAA round room, it was either 9 or 10 o'clock, uh, three men from uh, Reagan's scientific staff, three CIA people, three FBI people, and I don't remember who the other guys were, along with all the FAA experts that I brought with me that could decide or talk about the hardware and the software, how it worked. We put on a dog and phone.